seconds. We don't want to count us down. I mean, I'm already pressing record, so I'm going to press play. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> life most game, Dungeons and Dragons. Good playing. Yeah. Fine, role playing. No, definitely put down D&D. Yeah, I know. Put it in D&D. They come looking for you. They come looking for D&D. They come looking for you. I know. I just, um... You you play is not... Or update stream info is not letting me pick Dungeons & Dragons. It's got to be a game that it recognizes, apparently. Wait, and D&D's not in there? No, D&D's definitely in there. Oh, it's an ampersand. My bad. (laughs) So uh, I think they can hear us, but they can't see us. And uh, let's do the transition hey, thing. I have not gotten. There we go. It's flipper sort of. now. We are still burning wheel in the Ashen Empire. Oh know? well. Does anyone have uh, the the TMD podcast yeah. login? <laughs> and in Charles, I you as well too, Tyler. I I no, not for the stream. Is Andrew online again? <laughs> Andrew is online. So we were just talking about uh, what's his face. All right. Because I believe I have the wrong count. Yeah. No. I mean, at least we're not uh, not claiming to be a um, in an interview with the person because that would be just actually. The, yeah, the, no. the, hold, let me refresh yeah. Twitch real quick. It's on improbable interviews. Currently. Yeah, it, it is. Improbable interviews. Tracy, we're down at the bottom. Yes. Hi, folks. Bear with us a moment. Log in. We Twitch good. The problem is that um, I don't have. This is just all my fault. <sighs> Sorry, we need to get, yeah, we need to get that that sorted and distributed if we can. So if you all want to hear about how about the sausage being made, uh, there's a two-factor auth token thing that. Oh wow, that's totally not great. That's much better. I just I don't twitch well. That's all there is to it. Or caffeine. Twitch is a harsh mistress. Yeah. Uh, I just tweeted we're live, so... Yeah. Cool. Well, we <laughs> technically are live. I mean, we're live. We're just live on the wrong title. And I can't change it because I don't have the uh, the Twitch token. Okay. Did you... Cool. Did you try paying Andrew? Yeah. Uh, if I change my... Um, what I'm looking at in Discord, it changes the stream. So. Yes, it does. Uh, we am good at this. Exciting. Uh, so I'm now trying to ping Andrew on my phone. Could you change? And you know what? We'll just, I think we'll just soldier on ahead for now. Yeah, until and, when you're back. I'll yeah, keep we'll figure it out. Yeah, if you can figure out the thing, and if you like, yeah, it turns out. So hi everybody, welcome to uh, Legacy of Life on the Kaiju. Despite the fact that it says uh, improbable interviews, uh, we are that D and D podcast. I'm Mike Jerickson Burrard. I'll be the game master of sorts, the Kaiju master. Uh, and if anybody wants to introduce themselves, um, our preferred order is uh, click the two heads on the right side and just up in that order. So I'm just first. Hi, I'm Adam. I will be playing a group of people that I don't remember the name of. Uh, the Servants of the One True Faith, uh, otherwise known as the Red Path. Um, we like Kaiju. They're our friends. They're delicious. Won't you join us? Uh, hi, I'm Zach. I can him pronouns. I am currently playing uh, the Collective Confederacy of the Chimeric Peoples. Uh, otherwise known as this weird group of of dis, uh, diasporic mutants, essentially, of various of various m- animal heritage, of various of various. Mm-hmm. Jonathan. Oh, am I next? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm Jonathan. Um, I'm playing the family of Semelius. And I definitely didn't make Zach's people. No, that's not a nope. thing that happened. No, 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 no. no. Um, we are just trying to make our way in this new world by uh, enhancing the bounty of nature and ourselves. I'm sure everything about that is a really cool and great. This is fine. Uh, hi, I'm Matt. Uh, got he, him, his pronouns. Uh, tonight I am playing the stranded starfarers known as the Fawn. Uh, we may or may not be responsible for the kaiju and everything else. 
or most everything else, but don't pay attention to that. We'll be, we'll take care of that later. I promise. All right. Um, and. Do some of my best friends are here. Uh, if I can figure out how this works. Yes, there we go. Okay, awesome. All right, so uh, we should be properly flagged as uh, like one of the like one of the catchy. All right, cool. So that's all good to go. Um, and here we are. So uh, we uh, ended the last session with the creation of um, families. Uh, so we have all the families set up. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and change to the uh, map view so that everyone can see what we're going on there. Make sure that that worked, and then we'll continue forward. It did not. Why is it not? Okay. Uh, so let's talk about that while I figure that out. So somebody talk about uh, their, char their, char their character real quick. The character or the family? The family. Yeah. There we go. Okay, cool. So um, we've got uh, all the characters created. Uh, you can see uh, them on the left side of the screen. We've got Adams. Uh, everybody's introduced that. And then we have the Boneyard AK, where we're starting from. Um, it's not super uh, fleshed out yet. However, we have a couple of significant landmarks, uh, places that are may or may not be significant going forward. But the important thing to talk about the um, homeland is that we believe it to be safe. Uh, it's the place where we're not going to be um, harassed uh, going point to point. Uh, it's where we uh, keep our stuff uh, that doesn't mean it's safe, it just means it's safer than outside, aka the wasteland. Uh, there are some threats here, however. We have a rapidly expanding alien ecosystem, uh, carrying birds smart enough to, her to herd and harvest livestock. You can see that with the lily cows here at the bottom. Uh, a pack of predators, des perfectly designed predators, uh, as indicated by these predators, and uh, the competing kaiju cult. Uh, zip a little bit so I think I eat lovely large. So, um, we have our families. Uh, and the next step of game creation is to create a few characters. Uh, so Legacy is unique among the um, Powered by the Apocalypse games in that uh, we both play zoomed in on the individual character level as well as zoomed out on the family level. So we're doing big things like trying to accomplish um, wonders or if we're just, you know, uh, harvesting of ruins. The things that are going to take time, that, that take resources, that take more than one person um, a significant period of time, we zoom out to the family level and we uh, talk about how the family reacts to these issues and what they're doing to solve these problems. Um, and when we have a specific crisis or an individual instance where uh, one, two, three, or possibly even four people uh, might attack with a problem, then uh, we zoom into the character level. Uh, so we have the families for um, this age and many ages forward, but now we need characters for uh, this generation. So um, I believe that Adam created uh, family first. Adam, do you want to create a character, or is this a thing you haven't looked at yet? In which case, we can punt to someone who's more comfortable doing so. Um, I've picked a playbook for a character. I don't know um, much about. I haven't dug into the actual, you know, body of the character, but I certainly can go first. Sure. Okay. Uh, but let's do that while I pull up the uh, instructions. So I believe the first part is to pick a playbook. So yes, the playbook I have tentatively picked, or not so now, but um, was The Remnant. Um, I can read the little blurb because it's interesting here. Um, the fall wasn't all crashing stars and ravenous swarms. As patterns fractured and catastrophic energies discharged, some people were twisted into things ethereal and inhuman. Some retained their humanity and found adoptive families who accepted their oddities and welcomed their strange skills. So I'm making my this guy as um, someone who has been partially warped um, by whatever weird alien tech has come to cause the kaiju to be here. And it's sort of by the I guess, charismatic leader of this cult. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, so you don't have to literally be um, the leader in the family, but you, um, whatever character you do pick um, to play is someone whom the, care the family takes uh, direction from. So uh, even if you're a rebel or an outsider, when you say jump, eventually the family falls in. Yeah, no, I, I think this guy, at least the, my, the first generation, so the, the interesting thing I've read about the, the, from later on in The Remnant is that they don't necessarily disappear when they die. They can be reborn-ish. 
Cool. So I kind of like this reoccurring patron of the village or something. But anyways, that's for later when we all die. Um, when? When. Uh, so yeah, uh, I like the sort of almost half kaiju, half human, not in a way that Jonathan has already appropriated. <laughs> where they're purposefully converting themselves into kaiju. This guy has just been twisted by some sort of the alien fallout. So is it um, un unintentional, twisted by fallout, or is it intentional? Like they've grafted kaiju bits onto their body, maybe? Uh, no. So I think as the leader, he was twisted unintentionally and has played into that, whereas his followers try to emulate him by wearing you know, either things that make them look more like kaiju or... Uh, parts of kaiju to in reverence to the, the kaiju and you know in mimicry the leader but not actually to the point where they're bioengineering themselves to different they're still humans underneath their their guises but they they the kaiju generate, cosplay yeah effectively yeah cool okay um so you've got your uh playbook there for your character uh, you should be able to pull up yes. the character sheet um it's yes. already selected on the remnants uh, and fill in a few things there. You can pick a name, uh, you already have your family, uh, give yourself a look from the looks here in the lower right corner. Uh, you said you're going to be a leader? Yes. So, um, for a move, uh, you get to choose two of those. I think you get the protein form that you choose to. Is that correct? Um, I think that's still an option. That you can pick any of them. It just says choose two. Oh, yeah, but it's just weirdly indented there. Yeah. So I guess the, the one thing, the, the first thing is choosing a stats block, um, which I don't really know how they each come into play during the game. But uh, so it's I... it's very similar to the other Powered by the Apocalypse games. Um, force uh, is for, um, uh, it's like Forceful yeah, Charge, I think. Yeah. Uh, lore is to activate tech. Uh, steel is to survive in the wasteland. And Sway is to convince other people. Also, all four of those can be used in defense, effectively. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going with the one that the only one that I have that actually enhances Sway. So I have Force minus one, Lore plus one, Steel zero, and Sway plus one. Um, what I don't know is it says add your family bonus to one stat. Yes. What bonus is that? Because I, I don't see it anywhere. I believe... We picked it at the end of for the inheritance, right? So you are the servants of the one true faith. Yes. So um, servant characters get plus one sway, plus one to sway or steal. Ah, I see. Okay, there it is, right there. Got it. It's under there. Okay. Um, I think in going with this, we're going to go sway to two. Okay. Because that that seems like something that I'm going to need. All right, so I believe that the, um, where are the characters, right? Yeah, okay, so the core character moves are in Chapter 3. You start on page 44. Uh, diffuse, the core character moves are Diffuse, um, which uh, de-escalates a dangerous situation. Unleash Power, uh, which is Lore, it's when you activate a device. Um, when you find a marvel of the world before a strange remnant of the fall. Um, fiercely Assault is um, to hurt, capture, or drive off your enemies, which is plus force. Find common ground is find, ask someone to work with, plus sway. Call for aid is um, you roll an appropriate stat. And I believe that's it. There's also a few peripheral moves that you, roll, that you can roll. Okay, um, and then going through the playbook, the next one would be looks. So I'm guessing, just real quick, um, from these categories, it's probably a masculine figure with a twisted face. Um, let's say they have shining eyes, but not like, you know, they're sparkling and full of hope, but they're literally glowing, shining. Not literally glowing, or yes, literally glowing? Yes, literally glowing. OK, cool. Get some um, eye shine for that. But they still have a generally humanoid body, humanoid sized body. They're not abnormally large. Um, I bet you have to get a name, I suppose. 
Uh, and then the next one is backstory, which goes into everybody else's characters. I don't know if we're going to like do like we did last time, where we pause here. Yeah, or well, let's grab your moves first. Moves, okay. Uh, let me actually. I have to look through them here. So your options are a protein form. Your body was comprehensively twisted by the fall, but you've gained some mastery over it. Um, when you contort your body into a new configuration, roll plus steel. Arcane aberrations. When you force the power within out to twist the world around you, roll plus lore. On hit, the energy bursts free and does roughly what you wanted. Uh, internal memories. When you when you come upon a remnant to the fall, roll plus lore. On hit, get plus one data, and the GM tells you something you remember about it from the before the world was broken. And inhuman elegance. When you spend time. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a couple more after that. When you spend time with someone, they become fixated on you. Roll plus sway uh, to get some stuff out of it. Uh, it's also painfully immortal. When you take harm, gain plus two armor. And inheritance, get one of your family's inheritance moves. But we don't have any of those yet, so. Yeah. So uh, I see so that you've marked inhuman in in elegance. Inhuman elegance for one of them. Um, Painfully immortal sounds interesting. Yeah, I kind of imagine because the, the text you didn't read for painfully immortal was you gain two armor against the next hit as your body reflexively protects itself. Yeah. So I'm imagining this guy getting hit and turning further, like his body further converts into scales, or <laughs> or he like grows an arm that deflects words of yeah. Um. All right. Well, um, yeah, I'm gonna go with those. I'll go with those two for now. And if, okay. I, if I change something else, but while we go over there with else's characters, I'll do that. Let you guys know. But so we'll go with Inhuman Elegance and Painfully Immortal. Zach, let's jump over to you. Uh, and it looks like you may have your the Survivor. You're muted. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. So yeah, I've been. I was thinking since. Uh, my the whole backstory of my people is that we're very like spread out and not organized and sort of living by i'm sorry did you say very yes. you're you're very spread out um, here, i'm here all week folks you match for this. I, I, I sort of wanted to uh make the like the first archetypal character for them be somebody that very that definitely embodied that so I am playing a hyena person, survivor, right? Nice. So weathered face, wary eyes, lean body, uh, vaguely feminine, although not in any sort of soft or friendly way. Like, she's definitely been through some shit. Uh, in that wonderful butch hyena way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, named Loop. And then Loop Guru. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go with, um, for my stats, uh, I'm going to take the Force Zero, Lore Zero, Steel plus two, Sway minus one option. Uh, and then I'm going to use my family bonus to bump Steel up to three, because I want her to be super hard and hard to kill and, like, make her way out here. She's not real good at a whole lot of other things. She doesn't, she's not like educated in any of the stuff. She's not a scavenger. Well, she is kind of a scavenger, but she's not like someone who goes in and exports tech. She's not a leader of any sort. She's just like, has been hardened by her environment to be this way. Right. Um, for role? I think I'm going to go with I think I'm going to go with Outsider, just because I kind of want to start on the outs and maybe work my way in. Uh, since nobody's really leading yet, I think it would make sense to start on the way on the outs. Uh, so I'll be Outsider. I have a feeling some of these are going to be fairly easy to mark, though, so I'm not that worried about it. Um, backstory we'll come back to. Uh, moves, I get to pick two. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the things I've seen. Uh, choose. So I get to pick what destroyed my life. And I'm going to make it the barbaric excesses of mankind. So when I fiercely assault a group of humans, now I'm assuming that we can call my people humans as well, right? Yeah. We're, we're 
player characters were actually mostly human genetically. We just look like animals, right? Um, when you fiercely assault a group of humans, roll with advantage if you choose to drive them away rather than kill them or capture them. So I, I'm going to interpret humans as um, uh, sentient non... Or any potential player character. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, because my idea with the backstory here is like this person was either caught or had their former group or clan destroyed by the raven people that we've talked about earlier. Hmm. I want her to be directly opposed to the raven people. Um, and then I think I'm going to take for my second move, uh, this won't kill me. So when I suffer harm, I get to roll plus steel. On a 10 plus, I choose two. On a seven nine, I choose one. So I can theoretically take less harm, get advantage when running away or escaping, or ignore all the wounds I have until I'm out of danger. <laughs> and then you die. And then I die, yeah. Cool. All right. Um, so we're going to keep the backstory for yours as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to go on to Jonathan. All right. Um, so I think I'm going to end up doing an Elder. Nice. Of our clan. Back to, I'm trying to find what my family's stats are. I can't bonus things. I can't find them. Okay, Literally, you are, um, the cultivators, cultivators of the new flesh, flesh, yeah? So they're yeah. going to be on page uh, 100. Uh, cultivator characters get plus one to Sway or Lore. Sway or Lore. Okay. Um, right, so we were going to make an elder and um, just going down it. I will probably take the one that. Uh, I think I'm going to take the one that ditches for us that first line there. Um, so. So, yeah, it's force minus one, lore plus one, steel zero, and uh, sway plus one. And I think I'm going to take the extra point and sway. Uh, for my family bonus. Uh, for, eh, I'm going to go lore. I think that fits the family better. Uh, all right. What do we do next here? Um, I'm actually going to think, in general, for looks, the family kind of looks slightly off, and uh, gender is generally ambiguous and hard for people outside the family to read. Um, where is the looks? I can um, them out. There's nowhere to note them. So, okay. I mean, you can note them at the top of the character sheet. Are you? Do you have the character yeah. sheet open and in roll twenty? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah, I'm flipping between that and the PDF. Okay. Uh, do, do we are going to go with ambiguous, wise faced, sharp eyed, and wiry body? Body. There we go. Um, they are, well, I wouldn't say they're kind of old for the wasteland, but I mean, that probably only means like 40, maybe 50. <laughs> um, like, that's a special thing to get that far. Um, let's see here. What else do I need? It could just be like unnaturally aged, too. I mean, you know. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. That might end up being one of the things the family does. I don't really know. Uh, the backstory we're skipping for right now. Um, I don't know if I want to do. I actually think I'm gonna go rebel for roll. Um, because we talked about there was some stuff that's not real clear about the family, and not well known. Okay. Um. So, Mark, when you learn something about Shakespeare of the world, so we say that's happened. Um. I, I'm going to say that they are not part of that subgroup that were the actively involved in the creation of Zach's people, but I've started to learn hints about it. Okay. Um, this is part of the reason why I think I'm going to be hanging around with Zach some, whether they want me to or not. Oh, um, you rebel. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so weird because that would have never, ever happened. Um, okay. Apparently I have to also get two more people. That's cool. Um, Mm -hmm. So loyal staff, and then one more. Yes. So you get to pick um, a bodyguard, a scholar, a courtier, and/or a guide. Yeah. Well, I think you pick two actually. 
actually. Yeah, I'm gonna pick two of, of the four. Yeah. The and or did not work right. Yeah. It's clearly a bug in the system. Eh, it's alright. Um I think do I actually make a note here? I think Oh. Yeah. Alright, um I'm trying to think. I would definitely take guide, and then why does it do? Okay, the character sheet is behaving very weird for me now. If I click on like a, a guide, it's clicking three other boxes. <laughs> yeah, um, it, only, it, it was only. That's not cool. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's only a guide. <laughs> if I click on guide, it, it clicks courtier and tough old soul as well. So you want, let me try. I'm gonna try clicking for you. Go ahead. Nope. Oh, they're all linked together. Okay. We'll pretend, right. like, yeah, click whatever you yeah. want and we'll, like, note of it. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to take uh, Able Leader as our other one. And then a guide and, um, hmm, so many options. Give me three. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually trying to think of, like, a character I can, like, Put together in my head because like they're supposed to have names in some guy's description if I remember correctly. Are are these going to be some of my people's or are these going to be like other things? Ooh. Well, remember the family uses trained attack animals. That's um, true. <laughs> that's actually their preferred method of defense. Um, yeah, actually. All right. So the scholar, I actually think, um, is going to be. Uh, a skilled surgeon, um, and then the guide is sort of my minder, and it keeps doing all of that. So yeah, there's a guide. Uh, we'll get are, to that. Are you name them Bud and Lou? No, no, I will not. <laughs> no, I'm sort of tempted to. Um, all right. So I'm trying to figure out if there's other stuff. Sorry, I'm hopping through here. Um, Boxes traveling fearful. My harm boxes are actually some of the staff. That's okay. That is cool. Um. All right. Yeah. Yeah. When you take damage, you lose your buddies. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Meat shields go. <laughs> go for the eyes, meat shield. Okay. Sure. I'm not really certain what any of this stuff does. Um. But so, we'll we'll so figure you, that out. So you need a scholar and a guide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's uh, plenty for now. Uh, what's, your, what's your name? That's a good question. Okay. They have uh, name suggestions, and they are all almost uh, the exact things that you expect. Where are they? Uh, page forty-two. Under uh, you have some. Here's some. You have free choice of names. Here's my ideas. Uh, Ada, Anders, Angel, Bridget, Buffalo, Kant, Kato, Cloud, Elijah, Erwin, Ava, Eva, excuse me, Firestone, Flame, Gil, Hive, Isis, It. It's a lot. Uh, yeah. Wow. Some good ones like Makoto and Max. Yeah, I was looking at Makoto. I actually like Makoto. Because, like, so many, I, I don't think, like, so many of them strike me as, like, street names. I don't think my family goes down with that. <laughs> um,. Ah, we'll go with Kato. I like Kato. Nice. All right. And now that you've got a name, we can talk about Matt. Yep. I was going to go with Elder, Elder, but that already got taken, so kind of scrambled here. But If it makes you feel better, I was going to take Survivor, then Zach beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Survivor got taken? I, didn't, I thought I heard something else. Darn it, now I have to go figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't be Remnant, I think. Yeah. No, 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 Remnant was the other one. Okay, okay, that's fine. This is fine. <laughs> you, you, know what, you know what's awesome? Uh, I was thinking Promethean as the other one. Promethean's pretty badass. There's also uh, yeah. there's Untamed. Untamed. Yeah. I, I can actually see an Untamed alien. Untamed? Let me see. You are not designed to live in society, not just because of your violent nature, but, not, but because your skills and wits are all you need. Fearing no man, no beast, no evil, you rage and do not go gentle into that good night. I just like the artwork. No, that, sound, artwork that sounds good. good. I'm, I'm good for this. Okay, let's see what Saturdays we've got. 
Well, good thing is he get beak stats short up. Actually, yeah, I kind of like that gray. And I believe you're the um, uplifted children. Man. No, you are the um, alien people. Stranded Starfarer is good. So, far. so uh, you get a plus one to lore or sway. Yeah, it actually evens out my things. So I know I'm at one force, zero lore, one steel, zero sway with the array I've got. Ooh. Yeah, that's, I'm like, oh, that's kind of nice. So we've got that. Uh, <laughs> these farm boxes is perfect. <laughs> Indifferent, annoyed, enraged, winded, that mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Okay. Uh, so, so wait, yeah, your, your stats. You should either have two force or zero sway, I think. No. One of the starting arrays I can have is force one, lore minus one, steel one, sway zero. And I do that and take a one to my lore, which puts it at zero. Okay, your sway is at negative one, so I'm going to bump that to zero. There we go. Okay, cool. Sorry. Ah, so good. All right, so we've got that. Uh, How does Gelnax look? Gelnax is going to be uh, ambiguous with a wiry body and oh, dead eyes. That's just so terrible, so numb to the world. What if they are literally dead eyes? Hmm. I can work with that. that. I can work with that. Something happened there. Uh, and then... Let's see. I think I can go with Whispering Bliss. That might work. Yeah. Whispering Bliss would be nice. Okay. Okay. And then... So you, now you get to pick a, uh, a role. Yep. I would and, and these can be duplicated um, if you want. Mm -hmm. They have not yet have been, however. I'm looking at leader, actually. Okay. Seems like take charge, bolters in the face of impossible odds. Yeah, and we'll, um, I think we need to trigger those moves, but uh, we'll do that after the next set of things here. That's fine. And then the moves. So you have uh, two moves to choose out of uh, five. Fierce Agility. When you forge a pass, you can also pick Take One Harm, pushing straight through an obstacle or danger. Uh, keen senses, keen reflexes. It's impossible to surprise you so long as you have the use of your senses. Also, protect you and always react before the first blow strikes. Reckless fighter, when you roll fiercely assault, um, the GM must always choose something or someone important to you is harmed. Hail beyond measure, you have one extra, one armor, when outnumbered by overwhelming forces, you get an extra armor. And peerless brute, when you use pure strength to destroy something, curtailing your freedom, roll plus force. On hit, pick two. I think I'm actually going to go with Fierce Agility and Hail Beyond Measure. Nice. Okay. Cool. So um, we have four characters with names, uh, with a description, with descriptions, and a rough uh, overview of who they are, uh, at least in relationship to their family. Uh, so let's flip back to uh, Adam uh, and your character, uh, Antrius, I believe is how you pronounce that. Yep. Um, so for your backstory, you need to ask for a volunteer for at least one of those three things, or make up a fourth. Okay. Oh, and also I did switch Painfully Immortal to Protean form, just because I like the idea that he has more control over his body. Also, you are Venom. Yes, that too. Okay, so, uh, do you want me to read all three and then ask for volunteers, or as, you'll, as it strikes you, you can volunteer? That doesn't matter either way. Either way. Okay. I still remember how Blank reacted when they first saw me. Uh, blank welcomed me as one of their own, and Blank made me do something terrible. What would you think is terrible? Well, I imagine when I first was warped, there was probably a period of time where I didn't control the kaiju inside of me, and there was probably a small village somewhere that was decimated. When you when you get drunk, do you uh, black out and accidentally destroy towns and neighboring cities? 
just kaiju sightings and it came out of nowhere. The tavern just exploded. I don't know what happened. It was a song. Yeah, the, ki the kaiju inside of me is like an evanescent song. <laughs> it's either evanescence or baby metal, one of the two. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right, any volunteers? Okay, so all I remember is the last one. It's probably not yeah. even the last okay, one. Okay, so I still remember how Blank reacted when they first saw me, and Blank welcomed me as one of their own. I can take the, the how they reacted when they first saw you, because yeah. I imagine it wasn't super well. So first of all, what was your character's name again? Uh, Loop, L-O-U-P, Loop. Loop <laughs> Garu. Um, okay. You look stranger than me. What the hell? Yeah, but I don't look like a monster. Okay. You look like a... What is your character? Hyena, it's not, she's a hyena, hyena? person, okay. basically. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's all. Of, at least one. So if anybody strikes in a fancy, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm good with my one. No, I think I like the one of doing something terrible. Okay. And what was your character's name? Gail Max. Gail or Yale? Gail. Gail. G-E-L. I didn't take that last one. Uh, I feel like that's right up your alley, man. Yeah, well, because, like, I don't think I'd have a problem with you at all. Like, yeah. you'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> that fits in. Are yeah. you replicatable? <laughs> How would you do that? That's neat. What's this bioengineering you're talking about? If I need a, you know, scaly arm, and just yeah. you know, reconvert yeah. my body that way. Um, yeah, put down Kato for that. That'd be cool. Okay. Got it. All right, so that brings what us to... Characters? What was your character name? Antrius. Antrius. All right, so uh, let's flip over to uh, Zach. Loop the Survivor. You have uh, three backstory moves of your own. Yep. So I saved Blank from certain death. Blank reminds me of someone lost long ago. And Blank will need my help to survive. <laughs> I, I can definitely see myself in that last one. Mm -hmm. Why did you save Yolnax? When did I save Galnax? Um, I saved Galnax from certain death. Because you're sort of on the out. You're the untamed, right? So you're... Yeah. Do you, like, wander the earth? Or are you, like, untamed in the ship sometimes? Like, what's that look like? No, remember, they can't get back to the ship. Okay. Okay. That's why it's a, that's a problem. Uh, so yeah, definitely wanders the earth. Okay. So yeah, at some point I saved Gelnax from... Let's just keep going back to the, the well. I saved Gelnax from the crows. Like, the crows were around. They saw a lone alien. They decided to take a shot. And I helped pull Gelnax out. Maybe maybe you and I were caught by them at the same time, right? Oh, yeah. We had to, and, to get out. Yeah, we formulated an escape plan and like executed I wound up dragging you out the last however far into somewhere safe. Yeah, because I was trying to fight the crow water or whatever and that was just the thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alright, so takers on reminds me of someone long ago or will to survive. Yeah, I think the survive one makes sense for Kato. Okay. I think it does too. I think I think I would take one look at you and are, did we just? Did you decide that you were bringing like other chimeras with you? Is it um, well, I think they're going to. Actually, yeah. Why don't we say the the guide um, is Valera? Um, I don't know about that name now. Valera is great. Yeah. Well, I'm also doing a thing where like they're all Latin names inside the family. Oh. Um, oh. So it's not. If it's not a family member, maybe it's not. No, I'm gonna leave it at Bolera because, like, I don't think he's family, but like, he effectively is. 
Like, did, did your character extend that, like, that convention out? Oh, oh, he totally, he totally gave him a new name, because he's a uh -huh. dick. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> what happened, like, colonizer? Well, it, you know what I mean? It's like, it was well-meaning, and it was like, this is a great honor to you to take your name and give right. me what I think is appropriate. Did you forcibly <laughs> baptize them as well? Yes. Oh, God. Listen, okay. they use your immunization, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Immunizations. Okay, so I got, I'm gonna. I, Kato is going to need my help to stay alive, possibly because his guide is going or their guide is going to to leave them to the tender mercies of the waste at some point. <laughs> Being a huge dick. Okay, great. No, so I'm strongly tempted to rename him Kiff. Uh, <laughs> 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 a very sexy learning disability. What's it called? So I think Andreas could remind you of someone you used to know, not because you actually are reminded by someone you used to know, but just because I used the inhuman elegance to sort of make mm. you feel that way. So you okay. actually were willing to hang around my cult, my town or something. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you, did you like... Did, was it like a hum, more human person that I already knew, or did you take like, did you take the form, did you like intuit the form of some like animal person, some chimera that I'm, I'm, I was not absolutely negative on? I imagine there was probably like something more animalistic okay. than human. Okay. All right. All right. We'll keep that in mind then. Okay. Okay, I think that's me. Okay. Uh, and what was your character's name, Zach? Uh, Loop, L-O-U-P, Loop. That's right. Loop, near the survivor. I'm just putting notes on here because I want to keep track of the things I agree to. Um, <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> it's useful. Yeah. Um, um, and then we have... Uh, okay. okay. We got Kato's here. Um, yeah, all right, so I don't know about this one at all. Oh, wow. That actually just sort of made more sense. Um, so, volunteer for at least one. Blank would make a good match for one of my followers. Uh, oh, that's uh, deeply uh, unpleasant, uh, thank you. Oh, okay. Blank and I sat in council before, and I taught them wisdom. And then, uh, I know how Blank's parents truly died. I wonder if they would welcome the truth. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Oh. I mean, mm. I'm not going to volunteer Loop for the last one, but... <laughs> Loop? Okay, so I feel like if we wanted to be this weird... It could either be a weird comedy beat on the first one, or like a really, <laughs> like... Yeah, weird <laughs> tragedy beat on the last is, one. Is that a weird comedy beat, or is that just more, like... It can all, it'd also be, it'd be a dark comedy, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's working some rough, but... Uh... Like, watching this mad scientist try to play, like, like oh, nosy man. mother putting <laughs> kids to, Yeah, no. Um, Jeez. I don't know. Does anybody else have an interest in either of those two? <laughs> Play matchmaker. Uh, let's see. I mean, I could see for the, uh, unfortunately, for the first one where Andreas like refused to necessarily be part of like you know donate genetic material to directly to the um cause. Oh geez. So he's trying to induct them <laughs> into the family other ways. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yep, yep. Wow. Huh. I don't know if we're going to do that. <laughs> I, I mean, there are many ways to get genetic material. I, uh, let me put it this way. I think that's got a lot of energy behind it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're not going to just claim whether it's good energy or bad energy. It's just, it's just energy. <laughs> no judgments here. Oh, well, all right. Wow. All right, so I'll, I'll what take was that middle one? one? Um, <laughs> Blank and I sat in council before, and I taught them wisdom. 
Yeah, I know. so <laughs> patronizing. The, the aliens don't always want to be taken to a leader. <laughs> Uh, for given value of leadership, uh, <laughs> actually, you're like, now stuck in a weird world. You need someone's locals for you know what the hell's going on here. I mean, if 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 undo- oh wow, right, did you hire him as a guide? Did you pay him in like baubles that uh, to you that is incredibly valuable to him? Oh, oh god. Think, well, he, he could have paid in crystals. Those beautiful, sweet, sweet crystals that you mm-hmm. that you grow with. Yep. With table scraps. Because clearly I taught him the wisdom of trade. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we have, we're post-scarcity economy back home. That's what my parents told me. Just, <laughs> I had to work out a barter for, with you from first principles. <laughs> okay, I'm, 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 I'm kind of sold on this, actually. All right. And, and now we're back to me wanting to run Star Trek. What's going on? <laughs> Two days, man. This whole thing is like the win. Oh. The prime. What, what happens when you break the prime directive? Just beat the shit out of the prime directive. Yeah. What, what happened? <laughs> a uh, a captain that wasn't super into the prime directive crashed on a planet, and now uh, kaiju. All right. So um, we have uh, for Kato, you've got Gunax and I said in council before, and I taught them wisdom. Um, and now we're trying to figure out if you're this. <laughs> Yeah, we have a question of if someone would be a good match for one of my followers, or I know how their parents truly died. I wonder if they would welcome the truth. I don't know. Uh, Zach, is there one that you want to slot loop into there? If not, that's perfectly reasonable. I think I think I think you know how my parents died. Yeah, <laughs> and I think what we're going to start doing from for this for this session at least anyway is we're going to start acting like. The tribe that's attached to your, like the the clan of my people that's attached to your family, is the is the clan, right? Until we pull everybody else in, we're gonna act like that's the main one. So I came from that group. Okay. I think so. Not to, to you know, so we don't have to go with weird, creepy rape vibes. Yeah, um, but yeah. the first, can we tweak the first one where it's more of a competition between the two of us to see who can convince the other one to join their faction? Sort of like a friendly rivalry, like, you know, if you join me, will you be able to, you know... Yeah, yeah. I'm be okay. that much closer to the kaiju or become that cl- Yeah, you'd be my greater asset in, in my science cult because, you know, your assets would be very useful. I don't know. Well, and is it, are you trying for religious conversion? For me, for my side, yeah, I would be trying to show you that, you know, you could become ever so much more greater as a... You could achieve your dreams through consumption. So, so all right, how does this sound as a summation? Is that we go back and forth about whether you should engage in the normal work, not the normal, the ma- how do we want to say that? Mm, I don't want to say material survival like the, you know what i mean that here when i'm saying this though is like the everyday world the mundane we'll use mundane i'm saying that you should uh come and engage in the mundane world and make it better and you're trying to get me to engage in the spiritual realm and make myself better it, yeah it's just like you know science versus religion yeah kinda. yep yeah i'm cool with that got we got your bones and spock <laughs> let me go next kirk uh, no comment. Oh, oh God. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Open up your Star Trek manuals to page 693. <laughs> All right, so um, we now have everyone except for uh, Gilmax. Hey. Uh, unless, oh. uh, sorry, did you want to add... Uh, Adam's character is a is a that the top one. No, we yeah. like a fourth one. That the yeah. Sort of. There's just no way for me to do it. I'm gonna rewrite it down the history notes. All right, cool. All so, right, sorry. I was saying because I have, I was I building one that has a blank before below the third backstory. Oh, do you? My my sheet doesn't. My yeah, there cool. should be a custom one for it. Yeah. I mean, it's not very large. It's but it, there's an extra blank there for me. 
No, mine goes right to gear. Okay. Okay. No worries. Nobody likes being leaders, apparently. Not huh. leaders. <laughs> just the uncle. Elders. Elders. All right. So, uh, Matt, tell me about Gelnax's backstory. Uh, Gelnax's backstory. We've got somebody who's a volunteer for a fifth one, or at least that'd be nice. Uh, Blank and I have defied the law together. I am very proud of how far Blank has come. And Blank thinks I am trouble. So why can't they keep away? I really want to defy the law one. But I think it means we have to say something about... What law? Yeah. yeah. Whose law, what law? I think it's the, the natural law. There could be... I mean, there could be fawn codes that we've violated basically through through this mutual association. Or, That's a good... You know, what, what? Is it your laws that we've broken? Are you... Or is it yours? I think there's probably like laws about giving alien technology or resources to non, you know, non species. Non -species well, well, <laughs> giving human technology yeah. to aliens. You've been out yeah. here a while, right, Gilnax? You've been out here, you've been out here like on your for a while, right? Yeah, give or take. All right. Is there a rule amongst your people to know to not give any more DNA? To these people? Oh no! Is there a rule to it's a not fraternizing rule. The, the DNA information? Did you barter <laughs> DNA for something that you needed a long time no, ago? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I, I don't even know about that. It could well, also just be the the food source that they gave. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, I, I was saying that because that seems to make a lot of sense as something that was verboten, but is gonna get accepted and just become every day. You know. Like, mm -hmm. that's the bond between our characters is we're the ones who forge that, and it's still kind of on the down, down low, because if it comes out, everyone's going to be pissed. So we're kind of just trying to keep it quiet until it becomes obvious and sort of just everyday routine. Yeah. I mean, that could be, a, if we want to go that way, I could see going that route. Well, it's your, your background, but I'm just... I'm just I mean, it, it, no, it's, it's good. I'm, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to take a pitch in. Nobody else has anything better on Cool. So. And what were the other two again? The other two are I'm very proud of how far Blank has come, and Blank thinks I'm trouble, so why can't they keep away? I think either of those, with what we've already established for us, I think either of those works for Luke and Gilnax as a relationship. Yeah, definitely. Mostly, which way do you, do you think you want to take it? I don't know. Adam, do you have a feeling that you'd like to pursue? Yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out because I, I at the family creation, I kind of oh, did I condemn or I can't remember. Do I have that? You condemned me. That's right. We get that's right. Gave the cult or gave the red path those psychic projectors. Ooh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so we're righteous. So maybe I would do the one how far we've come along. Or would you want to go the other way with <laughs> Are you like the only point of contact, Gilnax? <laughs> you're just like, every single, everything that's in here, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You're, the rest you're, is you're, is there are not like any other aliens. There's I, just Gilnax. I mean, <laughs> but that, that's, that's like totally a thing we can establish, right? Like, most of them are. Um, Insular, <laughs> right? And Gelnax is the rebel yeah. by yeah, running out there. Tamed. Right. Uh -huh. Like literally, like he's the one who's going out and making sure that like they can all actually survive because he ignores all their shit. <laughs> and goes and brings back the things that the, the enclave needs. Right, I mean, is it is it like uh, not paternalistic, but like uh you're the leader, right? Like are are is yeah. is the the wildest and craziest among you the one uh uh, elected to go out into the world and get the things that they need. I think it's just it's one of those things where he just took it on himself. He's like, "What or, we oh, need these things? Is we Gelnax a title? Oh, is the wow. Gelnax the one that goes out into the world? Well, will it be one? Like, is it right? Oh, it like, that, that, that's like a legacy thing. Right? No, 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 no. Sorry." I'm, I'm jumping out of this. image that, like, the aliens have mostly given up and are kind of just content to let things happen and, like, 
come to their natural end, but you're like, fuck that shit. We got a planet. Yeah, it's, it's impossible odds. It's impossible odds. You can't get off the planet. No, we can get there. We've got this stuff. We just need to, you know, work with these people, get them up enough, and maybe we can do this. Like, if we build a tall enough ladder. Pretty much. I can just see them, like, helping, like, humanity along until such time as they build a shuttle that they hijack and are like, peace! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so no, that works. that explains Falcon Heavy perfectly. That explains <laughs> Elon Musk, all of it. Uh, we're trying. We're trying. So I'm proud of how far. Oh god. All right. Okay. So those those are that's that's a that's character creation, right? We got. Um, we don't they didn't come to a definitive conclusion. Okay, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, yeah. I think, given the the bond that Zach has with your character, it would kind of make more sense um, to do the first one, but I'm not sure. I mean, we can go custom um, in that I help Andreas to get them to. I help Andreas to help myself, basically. All right, that's that's fine too. I, if you're if you're okay with that. Like yeah, I, I, I don't know how much the the following you around works for me. That doesn't seem like something that I would my character necessarily would be doing. But um, well, no, it's that it's, I'm saying yeah. literally bond is I help you to help. Yeah, me. no, no, I'm, I'm saying yeah, I'm, no. yes, I, I'm agreeing that the custom is probably a better option okay. because the, the pre-built ones don't seem right. to fit very well. So yeah, I'm okay. fine with that. That works for me. Okay. And uh, just to be clear, did we did we break the law? Hmm? Uh, you know, it it it's kind of technically it's breaking law, but you know when you're on an alien planet for a few centuries, the laws kind of go out the window to a certain extent. Exactly. Especially if, already... since foreign materials already been oh. introduced. You just have to answer for your crimes when you get back to your home planet. When you remove, say foreign materials have been introduced without me snickering. <laughs> I mean, also, they're gonna have to come down. Like all your your people who don't want to come down are gonna have to come down to the service to like enforce the law anyway, right? It's not exactly. Like... What are they gonna do? <laughs> come down and fist fight kaiju themselves? <laughs> all right, now we've got a pretty good idea of character creation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do roll triggering now? Well, we have to. So, um, yes. before before we begin play. Uh, we should uh, trigger roll moves and look at family needs to tell us uh, what it is that y'all, you know, what the impetus for adventure and what you need to do. Um, I'd like to record that someplace. So I think I'm going to flip over to uh, another pane. So give me one moment to create a new pane. We're going to call this uh, characters. And we are going to destroy. Um, the grid, because I hate the grid. Click. No grid. Thanks. Okay. No grid. Okay. So, uh, we are going to have a text for, I'm going to call this 24-ish. It's not 24. Why is it not 24? Why does that bother me so much? Uh, characters. Okay. So, uh, we have, um... Let's talk about um, Antrius, because you were the one that has haven't had the thing most sure. recently. Uh, okay, so Antrius, Antrius, you are a leader. Yeah, so here that's what I'll mark from her. So does does this count as marking a box, or does it just just come start checked? Or how does that work? Uh, so we trigger it a character creation. So marking a box. Um, it's the same thing. Okay. So I we're see. we're marking it now. So you're going to tell us how you led the family in worshiping the power of the before or the fall. So yeah, I, I think this is this is this leadership is me gathering my first followers in cultist town and leading them to. Uh, church, where the, the future church of the landfall would be. So I gathered my initial flock. 
to um, you know enlighten them on the way of the kaiju. I already forgot the name of that town. It was just called Cultistan. Cultistan. We didn't, we didn't give it a name yet. We, we need to give it a name, probably. Yeah, I'm called this down. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 name them, we name them very simply. Black Holes Giant Monsters called us down. Uh, it leads them to church to initiate them in the ways of the Servants of Laundry Faith. Yeah, yeah. That's probably where they named the Red Path King from. It was a difficult arduous journey because back then they were still wandering kaiju before things had settled well, down. Well, so this is um, this is after things have settled down. This is the, the Antrius has taken over um, okay. as as things are settling down. Which, I mean, we can still totally use exactly what you said. right? Antrius's first um, foray as leader of the family is to go into Cultus City uh, and recruit a new batch of followers. Well, He's also, Andrews is also a Promethean, right? Remnant. Or, Remnant. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, you could be older. Yep. Yeah. He, he was first worked during the, the turmoil of the fall. Yeah, so this is the first generation that generally people don't have to worry about bad stuff happening, but maybe maybe you founded this freaking church or like one of the earlier converts or something. Like, you could have come up through a long ways. I mean, it, it also could be like the, the second or third iteration of the remnant. Is that, mm -hmm. that, that's how this character playbook can go, where it just like, goes into a cocoon status and is reborn for the next generation. <laughs> so you hide your egg up and then you pop out. Yeah. Ah, uh, shit! What is that race in Star Trek that goes inside of other people? Uh, tra the trail. Yes. Stop Star Trekking, Mike. So I'm oh, sorry. 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 So I've been, I've been watching a Star Trek Let's Play, so. Um, there is a... Uh, okay, so we're going to say... You mentioned this, uh, this the Ways of the Red Path. Uh, so we're going to say that... Um, and then GM adds... Uh, the Red Path is literal. Uh, it is a uh, road that leads from the cultist town to the church. Uh, and it is the blood of one of the first kaiju. Uh, and it has permanently warped the landscape, so anyone who stays on it long enough uh, gets an aspect of the warp. Are there like crystal stalact or stalagmites that like mark the path that have formed from the blood? And or have we both corrected thing? like warning signs? <laughs> I, I figure that every every family except for. The Red Path has uh, has probably <laughs> nailed down their own type of warning signs, like like lupus peed along the line to keep people away. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> is a trail of kaiju blood that has permanent Let's do another one. Who's next? Um, Zach, mm -hmm. you're outsider. Yeah, so Mark, when you it's time to move on, say what you're missing in the family. Uh, GM says where you might find it. So I, so I, my family oh, is missing. My, so hmm. you, you didn't do your one way, it's already changing them. So you have to say one way, it's already changing me. Oh, it's already changing me? No, no, for my leader. Family. So for my leader role, it says, mm -hmm. Mark, when you leave the family and worshiping the power of before or the fall, the GM says one way it's already changing them. So oh. I guess is that by people that you, that's already changing? I mean... Uh, I don't know if the, the them applies to the family or the leader or my character, so I don't know. The family. Um, okay. So it could be what you were saying with the, the how they are developing aberration. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to say that, yeah, they're, they're developing... Um, the the red path, the family, because the family is called okay. red path, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's good. If 
Okay. Sure. Um, so uh, my resilience, sorry. The uh, was Mark was time to move on. Say what you were missing in the family. The GM says where you might find it. Well, what my family's missing, we have recruits and scouts. There are a bunch of us, and we're all over. But we don't have morale, safety, or fresh water. So we don't have like the things that we need to build a place for ourselves or be a cohesive unit. So what I'm looking for, vaguely in some way that I, I might not even know, realize, you might not even realize is what she's looking for. But she's looking for some way to start unifying her people. She's looking for some hope that her people might be out from the yoke of, under the yoke of the mad scientists, or like finally come together in some way that they are. Even if it's just like, I go out and I find a spring and we can build a settlement around it, right? Or I like find some some reason that my people should be hopeful. But I can't get that here and nobody's working on it, so I'm going to go work. Okay. Um, I am going to add um, uh, that there is uh, the rumors of a safe place just outside the uh, the the known borders of the boneyard, um, uh, and like it's gonna be like this. Uh, you know what? It's gonna be this. Uh, it's gonna be a um, a cove like area. What do you call a cove of a mountain? Like an overhang or. A uh, like a, I forgot the word for it. It doesn't it doesn't matter. So it's gonna be like a a, a valley uh, sort of thing, uh, surrounded on both sides by by rock that's been missed by Caldera. I like Caldera too. Um, it's been missed by um, the ravages of the kaiju and raiders, like this untouched land that's supposed to exist and be like there's supposed to be water and trees and like it's supposed to be like this. This safe place, right? Um, shit, the land before time had like this valley thing too. Uh, be the hidden valley. Yeah, That's the hidden valley, common. right? Or uh, iconic, we'll use. Yeah. Uh, rumors persist of a hidden valley filled with branch dressing, uh, just beyond. Well, I'm sure we have raccoon people that would love some ranch dressing. So. Yeah, so go ahead and uh, add surplus ranch. Surplus ranch. Mm. Actually, wouldn't it be a need if I'm looking for it? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, 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 being, I'm making a joke of the hidden valley. I, I, I know. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no, now, now you're looking for croutons, so you need... Wow, that was a... Can you tell I had a salad for dinner? All right. Um... <laughs> Uh, Jonathan, tell me about Cato. Uh, let's see here. He is a rebel within his family. Mark, when you learn something that shakes up your view of the world, say who you're hoping will give you answers. So, uh, yeah, he, he learned about the uh, origin of Zach's people, um, and, like, them being actual people and stuff was really confusing, and he's still trying to figure out how to deal with that. Like how do you how do you act towards these these people? Sorry, I have to remember people. People. Um, and uh, he, he is looking to uh, Luke right now as like the one he knows to uh, try and give him answers. <laughs> um, and actually, I suppose by saying he's a rebel and this is what's shaking up his worldview, I just decided my family are a huge bunch of assholes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a reason I'm trying to get out. And I'm trying to get away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like before, it was sort of like, oh yeah, we kind of get along with them, and like we're a little related. Oh no, 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 no. Those are just above pets that like can talk. Okay. Uh, that's not cool. <laughs> um, uh, you still, you still use attack animals, though, like things that are basically, like, downgrades of us as your weaponry, so... So clearly he needs to get upgrades of you. Baby steps. 
right. Are, are we really going to do slavery and incrementalism? Is that what we're going to do? Oh, we're God. Incrementally escape slavery? Well, once again, this is becoming the question of what is people? You know? Uh, uh, <laughs> we. How is this always a question in our games? What is, what is a person? <laughs> we did not question what people were in, in Dresden at all. That is true. We did. We definitely did it in Star Wars. We did it in every did, other we game. We did question what were people because we had the robots. Oh, that's true. That's true. Oh, shit. Robots. Yeah, we had the iron files, and we, like, had a long discussion about whether oh, we were going to power them down, or we were going to yeah. let them, like, hive into my house and build a nuclear reactor. We had that conversation. Oh, yeah. yeah. God. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's an, it's an oldie but a goodie. Let's go with that. <laughs> Uh, I have nothing to add for this. Sorry, I picked a boring one for you. Mark me, you learn some of those takes up your world, so you're hoping we'll give you answers. Okay. Um, no, that's, that's fine. All right, so um, make sure that that one's all nice and aligned and stuff. And, you know, like, clear. Oh, I love roll 20. Uh, so, uh, Gilmax. Yes, we have leaders, so take charge after your family cultures and the faces of the possible odds. Uh, if possible odds being... It's literally impossible. Every time we tried, the kaiju has just absolutely just stopped us. So, Gilmax takes charge and goes, Look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build this place up so that it's actually defensible, at the very least, long enough for us to get out of here. The plan is not necessarily a good plan, it's not necessarily even a plan to be fixed in this lifetime, necessarily, but it's something to keep going. Yes. Okay, so you're... What the hell is that? Uh, so your plan is to um, uh, to to defense up, right? Sort of a more uplift, uplift the boneyard. <laughs> no, this is shut off. <laughs> I mean, do you mean uplift in the traditional sci-fi sense of the word, is in inject the species with rapid aging or better tech or whatever, or do you mean yeah, basically basically tech tech them up. Basically, get them up to half where they were at the start of the fall, so that they can withstand a kaiju attack, if only for a couple of days. And then escape. And then get out. Get get to the ship. Hey, what well, if they get to the ship? They might even use their stuff on the ship to, you know, clean up the planet. Maybe. If, you, if you're good and you give us all your stuff. De details are hazy. We'll, we'll figure that out in post. Um, I mean, that's like, that's a huge lift for Gelnax. Um, like, they are uh, the type of person to go out there and get in fights and all these things. And right, that's what it seems like, right? Yeah, I mean, Gelnax is basically thinking, you know... He's bright, but not that bright, and he's thinking he might be able to fist fight the world into getting what getting what they need. But uh, well, that, there's only so much that uh, that will get you. Okay, it says how it'll hurt you. I mean, like, um, there's so many ways this can go wrong. Right, but like. Uh, I'm looking at it like like personally, mm -hmm. right? Like, um, and that's like I'm I'm sort of uh, sort of at a loss. Anybody have suggestions? Okay, so how about this? Um, it will it will put you to direct odds with your family, um, in having to um, it, if you want to distribute tech to the inhabitants of the boneyard.
That's like that's like the verboten thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, don't, don't it, violate the crime directive. It's yeah, if you uh, if you violate that, you have to you risk becoming uh, an outcast. Oh. Are you gonna become Moses? You have to stay behind in the promised land. Yeah, maybe you will. You may not be able to see the see the promised land and shit again. Uh, that's that's up to up to Gildax to think at a certain point. I, I, I'm I like that. That's good. I feel a little bit better than I think I can. Can I do? Tech to lesser species. Jonathan's further characterization of his family has led me to look at the wonder that the because there's there are six things that you can build like over the course of several generations right uh, and they, you get a wonder from them and you get like some major effect and I'm looking at the one called revolution <laughs> oh I mean I, I would be shocked if you weren't already looking at the one called revolution yeah Unfortunately, one of the requirements is justice, so... Right, so you have to find out where to get some justice. Street justice. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow, I don't know how that happened. That's amazing. So, uh, in what is perhaps uh, inauspicious, uh, the, the, the ribbon, the toolbar, the page toolbar that you can pull down, the start page is characterized by um, the rapidly expanding ecosystem image that I pasted. Okay. Somehow that thing is our bookmark eye for, that page, <laughs> for the entire page. You can see on the screen, it's, it's, not, it's not what I'd call a good thing necessarily. <laughs> okay, so what I'd really like is to be able to like copy all of this stuff. I can just copy and bring it over as well. Can I? Nah. Sort of. Okay. Let's just pretend that worked. Or not. Oh. Okay, we'll flip back and forth. Okay. Done. All right. So, um, Adam. Yes. Uh, do you want to go first with Antrius? Sorry, first for what? Um, so there's a couple different places we can start. Um, we either start at the character level, uh, or we start out. You know what? Uh, we should start off at the character level, and we should start in media res because that's how I like things to begin. Uh, and there should be like explosions and nonsense and stuff like that going on. Uh, so let's see. We're gonna pick uh, more of the threats. Um, so just so you know, I have like yeah, I was gonna say yeah. Oh, okay, so maybe yeah, we shouldn't do we that. We might want to just paint the scene and then leave that for next week. Okay. Just hang us on a cliff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Literally. Um. So, Adam, what are the things that what are the things your family needs? I need. Get to the right page. Also, a very important thing. I need artisans, land, and safety. Okay, so um, uh, we are going to paint a scene, and you guys can. Uh, I'll have you guys to like uh, like flesh it out some. So, um, uh, interest. You've convinced because because Luke was also looking for the same thing. There's there also looking for land and safety, right? Um, so, uh, the characters find themselves, um, uh, what's the way that I, I like to do this? It's, um, uh, 
So the four of you are um, have become yeah. You're pinned down. Uh, you're pinned down in the mountains, uh, and it's like um, it's a million degrees. No, not literally a million degrees. It's like a hundred and fifteen degrees uh, in a blistering sun uh, on this like this rocky plain. Uh, in the mountains, and you're pinned down by some sort of enemy force. Um, either maybe it's like the perfect predators, or a rival cult, or the the care the crows that have learned hard um, to to, uh, to to whatever people. Uh, but something has gone horribly wrong, and somebody um, made a mistake that caused you to be out of position. Uh, and then like um, the crows aren't going to be like what's like the natural environment for crows. Um, yeah, pretty much wherever they feel like. I think. They're yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll go. We'll we'll stick on. We'll we'll stick with Planet Hell. Um. And uh, yeah. So you're in the middle of this the scorched, rocky terrain. There's like the one withered tree. That's like this. Um. And uh. Uh. So 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 somebody made a mistake to put you all out of position. Um. And like. Uh. So who 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 screwed something up in order to get you guys in this location where you know you're you're following the map and like the map's gone. Uh, something happened to the map and you're under attack and y'all are pinned down. Um, it seems very evocative in my head, but I'm just reading it out loud. It sounds sounds silly. I'm not the one with the guy, so. Oh yes, uh, Kato, you got a guide, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. Uh, mm -hmm. A trainee guide. Oh, that's what we'll start with. Kato is being uh, your guide. What is your guide's name? Double check that right now. Oh, Zach, did you have a name for your people, or is it just uplifted? Uh, they're they're the Chimeric peoples. I think is the the CCCP. CCCP. Yeah. 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 Uh, I yeah, think. Each of them sort of has their, like, each small group kind of has their own name, and I'm sure the ones that work for your family have their own name, uh, but I haven't really gotten that far. But... All right. I just want to make sure, because we decided that, I want to make sure I know it here, but it's Valera. Um, the how, how do you spell that? Uh, B-A-L-E-R-A. So the cold open uh, is Valera. Is that, is, that, is that an animal person, or is it just a person person? No, it's an animal person. I just had to be a good animal person for. God, I'm. Oh, jeez. Probably a dog person. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a same yeah, dog. No. You go to work for sure. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm imagining. By the way, they're not like. They're sort of like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mutants, where like their animal features are somewhat softened. Mm-hmm. Right. They're not like yeah. dog yeah. head on human body. It's like. Like, no, it, 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 I, like what I'm picturing now is almost like the Cowardly Lion from The Wizard of Oz. Okay. You know? <laughs> like, obviously a dog shape. <laughs> a cowardly dog. It's, it's a corgi person. That yeah. is. So, so Bolera is being carried off by carrion crows. No! So, we'll, no. we cold open with that, alright? Uh, and, um... Uh, and, like, there's, like, there's a reason to, to fight about what's going on, but there's also, like, uh, the pitched... Um, like rescue operation in progress. Uh, uh, so who 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 is doing? Who's got the first action scene on the cold open? Uh, is it Gelnax, or is it Loop? I think it's a Loop actually on this one. Yeah, I mean, okay. So by the way, and I don't know if this works. I think it has to be larger in scale. But we talked about how crows were the thing that came after that I survived, right? Yeah. And one of my leader move is mark when the thing you survived threatens your family. Um. I don't think it counts for one person, one member of my family. I think it'd be more than that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I think uh, what Loop does was is Loop like run. I imagine they're like care, like two of them have this corgi person. There, there's like three. They're like like they're like flying monkey sized crows. Like these are not okay. small, and they've got like <laughs> rudimentary clothes and like a blaster or something like like ridiculous '70s sci-fi. Yeah, so oh, one of the things... So Sorry. I, I would say Andrews would also have, could do a pretty good opener, too, where the first thing you see him do is sprout, like, these leathery wings as he force mutates himself to catch oh, him. Oh, 
Oh yeah, That'd be pretty good yeah. too. Yeah, because I was gonna say Yelmax is probably gonna be like getting trying to get his anti grad skim skimmer. Up so, well. so we've got it right. It's like yeah. the Power Rangers are forming, but they're not all together. <laughs> so what 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 is Loop doing? Uh, so uh, one of the things that uh, one one of my playbook moves is uh, my gear is when I tool up, describe a weapon with three tags and say who you took it from. Uh, so I think I have like, Loop has this like bag hanging over her shoulder that's huge, like just giant, looks like a, du a big duffel bag. And every occasionally like canvas has been flapping away from you to like electronic parts on the inside. And I think what it is is some giant energy weapon. Like it has this like ranged brutal aberrant are the tags. And so like as this as these crows are flying away, Luke flips it down off her shoulder and like grabs it by the handle. It's like it's basically like an underslung machine gun, but it's like a rail gun or something. And uh, you can hear like the capacitor start to whine as it powers up. And that's that's Luke getting ready for the action scene. <laughs> Imagine you stole this from Galmax too. Yeah, like yeah. it probably came off something. It either got dug out of ruins that we need to talk about, or yeah. or like it came off of like one of Galmax's school buses or something. But, I was going <laughs> to say, like it was in the trunk of the skimmer. You just it, it's it's the alien equivalent of a slingshot. It is a devastating mm -hmm. weapon in the world. Yep. All right, Andreas, uh, you said you had, a, you, had a, you had a suggestion? I mean, I can just activate my protean form move and, you know, hopefully make a roll. But it's going to be a lot more interesting if I miss the roll, too. Well, I mean, like, describe what you're doing, like, and, and then we'll roll and we'll see what, what horrible thing happens. And, like, so, yeah. go ahead. Uh, so the, the, the move, basically, I roll. If I hit the neck, either hold two or three, and I get, I get to activate these things. So two of them would be something like fly or travel to anywhere in sight. Okay. So that's, I'm assuming, meaning I'm sprouting some sort of travel mechanism, which could be like the leathery, like lizard-like wing, bat-like wings. And then shift a limb into a wicked weapon, melee aberrant brutal. So basically, I, you know, my hands turn into these vicious claws, I sprout wings, and I lunge after, hopefully not in the direct path of the cannon, but after the crows. Okay. Right about. Go for it. Um, uh, Kato or Gelnax? Gelnax is basically uh, kicking on his air skimmer and is going to go like skidding through the air, hoping to just to grab uh, grab the land into onto the, the passenger seat and just speed off and out run. So is it like is it like a one person transport? Is are these like rocket skates or is it an actual vehicle? I was thinking it was like at least a two, if not a four person jalopy sort of thing. Okay, so like, uh, is it does it is it collapsible or do you call it down? Does it like does it does it enter from orbit or does it like how do you get it? Can't get it, can't get it from orbit. Um, you know, I hadn't thought. I was thinking it was just a thing. It didn't have necessarily a collapsible mechanism. But now that you're saying it, I'm kind of feeling like a capsule thing, like from Dragon Ball. So there are not expands. I don't know if having those, you know, quantum speed. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and Kiddo, what do you, what do you, what is I'm thinking more like uh, one of the Dimension X hmm. rods from the 80s Turtle Show. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think Kato is doing a thing. I think uh, Pelica, um, his dollar retainer. I gotta come up with a better name for it. Well, I want to use the word like Sturgeon or something like that. But um, they're actually uh releasing the flying kaiju beasts. In the little, little I'm picturing like almost like I don't know I'm trying to figure out like what I like of these but like little kaiju bat swarms like little zoo bats yeah, yeah, yeah but, like, but they're definitely reptilian um, and, and he's trying to get them to like just kind of herd the the uh, kind of box in the crow people so that people can you know try and rescue Valera get them my pretties 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's I, I referenced Oz, and now I must pay. Uh... <laughs> Rat creatures, uh, like, like, like pick pick a reptile. Like, are these um, Komodo bats? Are these like snakes with wings? Ooh, that's strong. I'm, I'm trying to see, because, like, I'm thinking they don't look like normal reptiles, because, like, I'm almost thinking, all right, so the other thing is that my character gets a friendly pet, right? That's just cuddly and stuff like that. So, like, picture Momo, but kind of reptilian, you know, from Avatar. Okay. And, like, these are the less friendly attack versions of that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> also strong. Frogagators. Frogagators. So... According to the Godzilla Wikipedia, there's things called hell bats. Oh, which are bat, bat demon kaiju. Ooh. Okay, so that's totally what everybody else calls them. We're gonna have some kind of science name for them, so I don't go around with hell bats because that seems a little bad. <laughs> a little bad. Just a little. Well, I, I just think it's going to be one of those things where everyone calls them hellbats, but really they're like, you know, avian reptilian attack. Choptera? Choptera is the bat class, right? So, Choptera yeah. Inferna? Let's just say, yeah. Infernus, Choptera Infernus. Choptera Inferna. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Choptera Oh, there we go. So, if you go to that Wikipedia link I posted, there's yeah. like four pictures of comics at the bottom where the gallery is. And it's like Hellbats devouring Godzilla and then reforming as Godzilla. Uh, that's from, they're, they're from they're literally from Godzilla goes to hell. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. Wow. Yeah. First appearance: Godzilla in hell, number five. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> Demon kaiju meat. Uh. Chopter, uh, <laughs> <laughs> aka Hellbats. Hellbats. Sure. Um, so Kido is probably going to release the flying reptilian bat creatures. <laughs> Chopter and Furnace, <laughs> aka Hellbats. Right, and that's that's an awesome Voltron esque opening, right? There's just like thunder, 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 cats, and they're all just like doing shit. Uh, and uh, we're not at all coordinated. We're all just no, no, no. So, and, and you know, things are low, so like things will go badly, and that's cool. And then we'll uh, we'll recover from there. So, because like Adam, you gotta go, right? Yeah, I gotta bail. Okay. Right. Uh, so, do we do we want to soldier on for a bit, or do we want to like go ahead and call it because this is like the first action sequence and pick it up in next week? I want to keep playing, but I also don't want to do it without Adam here to be able yeah. to like do the input yeah. Stuff. That's fair. That's fair. And I gotta admit, I'm pretty tired tonight too. So. Okay, cool. Um, I might uh, just jump right back on the stream and uh, and stream like Vampire or something to keep us going until um, until midnight. So midnight. Yeah, I I, I I make wonderfully bad decisions. Like having so much fun. It's, it's so great. I, it's like I was telling I was telling uh, Andrew uh, on one of our side chats. The I have watched three people besides myself play vampire, and they've all made the same terrible decision that yeah. I made at one very specific point. And I'm like, did they sell it that well? Did they sell that terrible decision that well? <laughs> <laughs> it's a really yeah. good game for, for making terrible decisions because you thought they were good ones. It's great. Awesome. All right, guys. So um, yeah. we're gonna take off. We'll be, uh, we'll be back in like uh, in five ish minutes to do to do another stream for funsies, uh, and we'll I'll figure out what a pipe in Zach so you can hackle me. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So thanks, y'all. Uh, hope you had fun. I will upload this and the previous one to YouTube. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, do all those fun YouTube -y things. And we want uh, to play us out. Night. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Clicking in now. Oh, uh, join us next. Uh, I don't remember when our next thing is. So. Saturday? The fifth? Oh, well. This game. I don't know. I had this to be calendar thing. Yeah, I think we have something on Saturday, actually. Do we? No, we don't have something on Saturday. The next thing we have yeah, it's is. This is coming next Saturday after that, I think. Yeah. So it's Tuesday then. Yeah, so um, join us on Tuesday. I believe it's going to be uh, more burning will.
Yep. Burning wheel. And, um, yeah, cool. Alright, folks. Uh, peace. Do something good for the world.